All right, guys, when we last left off, we introduced our new model that we're going to be working on, which is this Caterpillar 988B that we're going to be converting into a 988F. And we needed a donor model for some new wheels and tires. Somebody had suggested a Komatsu WA600. It's a very good, uh, good suggestion. Unfortunately, with that model, it has the same problem this one does, where the tire to wheel size ratio is not as accurate as I would like. And you guys know I'm a bit crazy when it comes to accuracy for stuff outside of the model stuff that we're going to be looking at frequently. So I have procured this guy. This is a Caterpillar 988K. And I know what you guys are thinking, man, that is a new model to be taken apart for uh, parts. And you would be correct. Normally I try to find a used model, a broken model, something that's destroyed or inexpensive to use for donor parts. And I try not to buy something like a brand spank new 988K. But every once in a while, you gotta spend a little bit to get details if you're gonna be a nut about details like I am. Um, the Caterpillar 988 uses a relatively rare tire size. There are very few loaders that actually use this size tire. Another one is the Volvo 330 and 350 loader. Um, the models for those also didn't have tires that I liked. And there was another option. There's a gentleman in the UK who makes a really nice aftermarket wheels and tires. And these were the closest that he had matched to the size but they're just a little too small the the diameter and the thickness is not what i what i want they're actually slightly smaller than the ones that are on this model and just a hair narrower um, but don't worry these will go to another model later and also the hub design on this one is a little bit out of date so let's look at what we got here got a caterpillar 988k uh, pretty cool looking model. Um, I'll disclose the price. It was 113. Yes, that is a lot of money for donor parts. Is the model worth that? I don't know. Um, I'm not a, really a fan of this generation of loader, though Cat does make some newer loaders of this generation that I think are cool. After the 988F, I kind of fell out of love with the 98 mo 988 models. Uh, Caterpillar lengthened them quite a bit. As you can see, it is a lot longer than the B-Series. Um, I imagine they have performance reasons for doing that. The loader also grew in size, but it maintained the exact same size tire. Let's take a look at these tires here. They're pretty, pretty darn nice. This is actually a tread pattern that um, is found on some of the 988F models that I was looking at online. And um, the hub is a little newer generation. The hub and the B and F sits inside the wheel a little bit. So we'll definitely need to modify that. Um, as far as parts that I will be robbing from this model, uh, definitely going to take the undercarriage and it's going to come off. I'm going to cut it off and find a way to adapt it into this one. Though I'm going to have to make some modifications. As you can see, this is all a little bit loosey-goosey back there. Let me position it back here. As you can see, it's got some play almost as if it has rear wheel steering, but I don't imagine that it actually does in real life. So we'll do modifications to keep that from being so loose, but still maintaining this. I'm also going to steal the front axle and hub assembly, uh, the hydraulics for the artic articulated steering will be going with us as well. Um, these are in a different position than they are on the F model, so we'll have to make modifications for that. And the um, lift cylinders for, sometimes I call this a boom. I know these are called arms, but I just have boom in my head. So I might call it that on occasion. Forgive me. Uh, the lift cylinders will be getting stolen as well. And then I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do about buckets. So the bucket that is on the 9088B model is definitely under detailed. Again, as we mentioned in the last episode, um, Ertl wanted this to kind of do two things to be a kid's toy and also be good enough to sit on a shelf for somebody like me. Um, 
but in doing so they ended up giving it like this uh, smooth spade which was a bucket that was equipped on these if you have this working out like a, a mill where you're just loading uh, material all day that isn't being dug out of the ground by the machine itself you're you're not needing uh, teeth to grab onto rocks and stuff like that um, that is a realistic bucket but beyond that it's kind of missing it doesn't have any uh, edge guarding on the bottom which the F would have all the details for the the spill fence on the back of it are uh, pretty pretty low however the bucket for this K model with the camera here but is a bit too new generation so let's move this guy out of the way um, can't just directly swap it on either because it has a different type of coupling point uh, this is narrower and has a single attachment point at the top whereas this one has two so regardless of what I do whether I keep uh, this bucket and modify it or I take and adapt this bucket to the model I'm gonna have to do a lot of work to make it look right um, this bucket is about the same size as the bucket that's on the B model um, the F actually did get a slight increase in capacity for its bucket so it wouldn't be astronomical to have this bucket which has a slight increase over the F added to this the biggest dimensional change though is that it's wider however the wheel um, the the width at least on the models is the same I haven't looked up the specs for the, for the loader yet as far as that width but uh, may be able to get away with having a wider bucket on there especially after I swap these uh, wheels and tires over onto this model I don't buy a lot of newer models um, actually I haven't bought any of these newer models for my collection but what's up with Captain Cool Pants in there I noticed that all these new die cast models have this guy in there is everybody cool with that is that something that the the buying public wants I don't know like if I had bought a model with with a figurine in there with the intention of putting it on the shelf for display I would want to take him out of there I don't like the way that looks and unless you know how to take this thing apart you're kind of stuck with them in there because I don't see any way to open the cab the excavator that we used for our last project the donor you could pop the top of the cab off and take Joe cool pants out but this guy uh, does not look like you can get him out of there which kind of which is kind of a bummer but anyways let's get these things taken apart one thing to remember when taking screws out of something whether it's a model or anything else especially if you plan to reuse the screws always check to see and make sure that the screwdriver they're using actually gets a really good grip in there this one is nice and small and looks like it would be the right fit but it's actually not um, I've grabbed another bit and it when I get it dropped in there it actually has a much tighter grab on the head of the screw and if you can find an exposed screw like one of the ones up here on the front you can get a better look at how how it drops down in there and just makes uh, makes it a lot easier to tell if you can get a good grip to take that screw out because the last thing you want is to get the screw a quarter way out and then end up stripping out or rounding out the inside of the screw and then now you got to go take a drill and try to get it out of there the rest of the way which is not a fun way to start any project Look at the little pins that are deep down in, oh, let's get the perspective on here, that are down inside here to release these uh, hydraulics. I'm having to use this little, it's called a football burr. Bam, 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 bam. All right, I've removed everything that I think I'm gonna need from the model. 
and that just about does it one last thing let's just take this cab off so there's one screw right there that holds it in place plus these two that are in the front oh those don't even hold it so it's just that screw right there that holds the cab in place but it was hidden under all of this stuff so if you wanted to take it off you would have had to pull this whole model apart just to get to that one screw to take the cab off I was going to see if I could use the interior for it, but it's kind of lackluster. Uh, and I don't even like the seat. It's not the right type of seat. But I think I will swipe these windshield wipers um, and see if I want to use those or not, or if I'm just going to make new ones from scratch. Because I talk so much trash about them, I might as well take a cool guy here. He can sit and watch, uh, watch what's going on. If you're retired, not going into the cab of my loader, at least not while I'm awake. All right, now let's take the B apart. I've actually already opened this thing up once in the past because I did stuff to the cab. It was a lot easier to do than the other one. Just like that, the bottom comes off and then the front comes off as well. To get the rear wheels off we're probably gonna have to cut the axle I've already tried to pull these out before but they're pressure fit in place and I don't have any way of separating those um, and I'm obviously not gonna reuse that axle so it will get cut but in the event that you ever have to do something like this like, like if I wanted to reuse this and I had to cut it out you can always just use a piece of brass tube to create like a sleeve and then slide those back into that uh, brass tube and glue it together then uh, Bob's your uncle. You've got to put back together. All right, we got the new bandsaw here. Uh, as you guys remember, I had that nice big green one earlier, but with my new workshop, it just doesn't fit into the store space. And coincidentally, at the same time, um, my mom was getting rid of this one. So it is the new shop bandsaw. And it's time to break it in. See if it can handle the task of cutting through this cast zinc. So this is the bottom to the 988K. Let me shut the door to the laundry room here. This is the bottom to the 988K. What I need to do is cut the hydraulic tank off and cut the fuel tank off because I'm going to actually take and drop this down inside the uh, the B so that I can have the articulation for the rear axle I figured since it fits right down in there like perfectly I might as well just do it that way make it nice and easy I'll also leave the base of the uh, rear counterweight and all that on there as something to build on later all right so we got the sides sanded down but we got a little bit more cutting to do to make this fit I've taken and I was able to slide it down in there a bit, but it's still grabbing. Uh, it's a little bit tighter in this this area, so I'm going to cut some of that material out. And then I'm also going to cut this off right about there. And my plan is, and I'm not going to cut this part up yet, to see if I would be able to slot it under here. So I would keep this part for the model that I'm building and then use the rest of this. So let's see if that works out. Right, now that I've had a look at the underside of this, I've figured out which direction I want to go with how I want to do this. So there's two ways you can go about this. There's the easy way where just drop it all together like this, cut the front of this off, install it back on, take this, which is the front frame, run the new axle through, pop it on, put it together, and call it a day. But that's kind of half-assed. I don't want to do that. I want to make a more detailed undercarriage. So I'm not even, even going to need to use this. And I am going to build basically a full representation of what the undercarriage of this looks like. Now it's not going to be 100% accurate because I've only had photos and luckily I actually found some photos of one of these that had been uh, stripped out for parts so I was able to get a better look at the undercarriage but I found that it's very 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 similar to the undercarriage of this the Caterpillar 992C 
Um, unlike the 992C, it doesn't have an exposed frame here. Uh, there is a drip panel that's installed here and here, and then the uh, transmission and transfer case is also covered with a guard panel. But the frame is very similar to the way the frame is on this one. There's some slight nuances in, the, in how it's shaped back here behind the wheel. And then um, the front frame is very similar as well. There's some slight differences between the 992 and this one. But it gives me at least a, a example, a reference point that I can combine with the photos that I have of the 992F or the 988F so that I can make an undercarriage. Basically, we're not gonna do a super basic undercarriage for this thing. I'm going to create a frame. The uh, fuel tank and the hydraulic tank are going to get cut out and made into independent takes. Um, and then I'm gonna make some changes to these shapes around here and uh, also cutting out the middle of the deck so the cab sits freely over the way it does in the 992. You can see it's got a little bit of like a iframe that holds it up. So basically my F is going to look like this once, once I'm done building the undercarriage. Because really that is gonna be the most complicated part of this project. Uh, the more I looked at the rest of doing this, it's all pretty simple stuff. Um, my CNC machine is hopefully gonna be able to help me with a lot of that. There isn't going to be much that's going to need to happen to anything else on this. I've elected to keep this bucket and I'm just going to give it an overhaul. And there really isn't too much else that's going to have to happen with this project that's going to be too complex. So I might as well make the undercarriage of this the, uh, what do they call it, the feet de resistance? The, or no, pays de resistance, the, the, the part that I'm most proud of. That will definitely be... Uh, the undercarriage because that's something that you're not going to see it's going to be on the shelf and unless I take it out and flip it over nobody's really going to see that but it'd be nice to know that um, it has that completeness to it right like why do 90% of this model really good and ignore 10% of it that just sucks so that's uh, the route we're going down with this All right, so I got the frame pieces cut out here. Uh, it was actually not as hard to design these as I thought it would be. I found a good photo of the 988 with the wheels taken off, so I was able to see the rear part of the frame. And then I just traced that on uh, Inkscape. It's a free vector program anybody could download. And then I transferred that over to my CNC machine and ended up cutting this out of some 0 0.09 inch brass. I'm going back between metric and uh, US just because that's what this material was. But yeah, it came out pretty cool. Um, this thing cuts brass really, really well. I'm really pleased with it. So what we have here is two of the basically side pieces for the frame and then I will create another piece that will connect on the bottom and then there's going to be two plates that connect the top and these will drop into here and basically create the side or the whole rear frame for this machine and they are they're intended to fit over this thing so this will still get used um, I'll probably cut some more material away from it but the frame will sit on the outside and I made it a little bit extra long um, so I could just have more material to work with and then I'll end up cutting probably that portion of this off so that it fits into that space and then uh, I'll probably create some details for stuff that goes on the inside of here but yeah that worked out pretty well and I just got to figure out how big this is all or how wide it's got to be and and the next steps. Anyways, that concludes this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next episode, hopefully we'll be finishing this rear frame, getting everything soldered together, and then going from there. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you next time. Adios.